Welcome back, ladies and gents, boys and girls. We're back to work on the case swap Sephiro Bell. We've got about a month to get this thing done for Drift Week. We've got a decent road ahead of us, but I, I think we can do it. I really do think it's feasible. If we keep hustling and we don't run into any major delays, I really think we could at least get it running and driving by then. I don't know if we'll have it completely dialed with the AC working and stuff, but I mean, I would think we can get it running, but I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. We've got the engine stripped down. We got the head off of the machine shop. We're doing a semi-built head. We did go ahead and get the engine ready for the rear-wheel drive pan. We did basically the rear-wheel drive conversion to it. So once we get the head back from the machine shop, it should just be a very straightforward assembly. Toss the head on, bolt the engine back together. It's built, it's ready to go in. So while we were waiting on getting the head back from the machine shop, we are turning to the chassis side of things. So. In Juku Racing, local to here, they're about an hour away. They're kind of like a hometown hero company, if that makes any sense. Uh, so anyway, ISR is their house brand. Again, they're local, which is amazing because they make so much stuff for these cars. So I was able to get this stuff. I ordered it yesterday. It got here today. So, uh, so handy. So anyway, we got all ISR arms for the car. We've got their five lug conversion because we're going to five lug, ZX brakes, yada, yada. Which means we will have to get rid of our VSXXs because the car is currently four lug. Uh, brake line conversion, inner tie rods. We've got the GK Tech bolt-on angle kit we're going to be using. We have steering rack bushings. going to be extending the lower control arm. So we're basically doing angle and suspension arms and subframe bushings and a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. That being said, <laughs> we need to stop wasting time talking about it and start doing it. So we're going to get the car up, get the wheels off, dive in. All right, actually, before we do that, I want to get this housing swapped on just to make sure that this is going to fit with the exhaust manifold that I have and because I'm, I'm too antsy to see what it looks like with a nice V-Van housing. So let's do that real quick. This looks so tiny compared to that one. I think that'll work. It's just like this lip on the inside is bigger than this ring here. I don't know, we're gonna run with it. Worst case, we have leaks, we'll just cut that flange off and weld a new one on. Not ideal, but uh, we can definitely do it. crazy how light this turbo is. So these have aluminum center sections, so we are gonna have to run coolant to it. But I mean, like this setup, boys, it feels like nothing. It's like the heaviest part is the uh, housing. We about like that. I wish the uh, head was on the engine so I could put it all on the engine and take a gander, but, but I mean, it's definitely nice to see the, the unit together. Snazzy looking combo, boys. All right, well, now it's time to move on to the more uh, physically demanding stuff like pulling the rear subframe out. When in doubt, PV it out. Freaking pro straw, so handy. Let this sit for a minute. Speaking of PB, the Blaster Corp is the sponsor of today's video. They have become a long-term sponsor of the channel and an awesome company to work with. And as most of you car guys will know, they make an excellent product. And this is their Multimax synthetic lubricant. This stuff is incredible. I recently used it on the LS Miata's door hinge. A lot of people always were like, your door hinge squeaks, it squeaks. And for whatever reason, I just never noticed it or paid any attention to it. So I finally lubed it up with this stuff. Squeak was gone immediately. Look at that, boys. So we're gonna use this on something else that's been squeaking. This thing. No more squeaky squeak, yay. So not only is this an excellent product as far as what it is, what's inside the can, but the can itself. They have their new Pro Straw set up on this so you can have the straw down, spray far, spray wide, bring the straw up, Get into a tight little spot. And 
they have flow control, which is what I've been using. So I can turn this down, go down here and just spray just enough. Instead of having to coat the whole thing, I can just, a couple little presses, boom, we're done. We're good, we got it exactly where we want. No excessive mess. Huge thank you to the Blaster Corp for sponsoring this video. It's so cool to work with a company whose product I've used day in and day out ever since I've been working on cars for like a freaking decade now. But uh, yeah, that's enough talking. It's time to get back to work. Ha! Ah! Would you look at that? Would you look at that? I mean, you saw it. These weren't coming off. What happens when you neglect the car and it sits for a freaking year without you taking the wheels off it? So some of you may have noticed, uh, there's no brake caliper here. It didn't take that off ahead of time. It has been zip tied over here out of the way with a piece of wood zip tied in it. And the reason for that is because the brakes on this thing are basically specific to the Sephira. They didn't come on anything here in the US. There's no cross reference of some Nissan that was made here, which makes it very difficult to get rotors and pads. I basically have to get them from overseas and the shipping and everything. I mean, it ends up being similar cost wise to just doing 300 ZX brakes. So that's kind of the main reason for going to five lug. I do kind of like these wheels and I would like to keep them, but it'll make life way easier to go to five lug and 300 ZX brakes because then I can get brakes and pads and rotors and everything I need uh, locally within the US, not have to order it from overseas. So. Plus, you know, it gives us more wheel options and yada yada. You get the idea. Let's keep tearing this apart. Got the old Milwaukee right angle impact. This thing is a game changer. Not too bad. Oh, the e brake's probably on. All right, e brake wasn't on. Let's hope the old. Oh, there we go. All right, we'll knock out the other side and then move underneath. All right, I think she's uh, ready to come out. Get these Johnny's off the rest of the way. Hit the other two bolts, drop her down, give it a shot. We got some brake fluid on it, but our subframe is out. Now we need to strip it down because I want to clean it up, throw some paint on it. And also pretty crazy. We are going to be doing solid subframe bushings and one of our subframe bushings just fell apart on its own anyway. So uh, probably not a bad call to change the subframe bushings, I would say. <laughs> oh man. Since this is just tear down and we've got shiny parts to put on, which I'd rather show you, we'll snap our way through it. All right, we got her all stripped down aside from the diff. So we are gonna wait to pull the diff out. The diff will kind of hold everything down while we try to blast them out. Here's all the uh, stock parts. Other than the lower control arm, the hub itself and the axles, we've got all new parts, all new arms, new hubs, new everything. So should be exciting. Subframe should look nice painted, but uh, first thing we gotta do is get the subframe bushings out. That thing put up more of a fuss than I expected. This is what it looks like at the end of all that. <laughs> wow. I thought I'd be able to just basically chisel up the lip and then punch it out the top. But when that wasn't working, I tried punching up from the bottom and that was just splitting the cage. It, they were in there, boys. So we'll have to clean this lip up. Got a little wild through this section. But other than that, we got one out. Three more to go. <laughs> Alright, I refined my method a little bit on this one. As you can see, it's in much better shape. Boom!
Well, quite some time later, we have all the subframe bushings out. All four out. Definitely a fun process. I went ahead and used this uh, drum sanding disc to clean out the inside just to get rid of any surface rust. That'll just make it easier to slide the new bushings in. Still gotta clean up the lips up here, but uh, we can go ahead and pull the diff out, pull the sway bar off, clean this thing up with a wire wheel, get all the scaly rust nonsense off, and then throw a coat of paint on it. All right, I give everything just a real quick pressure wash just to knock the dust off. So we'll let this dry overnight and then in the morning we'll paint the subframe. I wanna dive into the diff and make sure it is actually a 1.5 way, which is what it's supposed to be. And then we can start reassembly. All righty, all of our parts have dried. Subframe's ready for paint. I've just gotta throw some tape in the bearing races so we don't get over spray on there and make our lives harder than they already are gonna be <laughs> pressing in those solid bushings. So I've got my big piece of paint cardboard. Very handy to keep one around. The weather's not looking too promising, so we need to get some paint on this thing ASAP. Let's get to it. Oh, another thing, I would highly suggest this stuff. Gloss Protective Enamel. Uh, I started using this and it is definitely the best spray paint I've ever used. This is obviously not sponsored or anything, but I've just used it and it's, uh, it's always had really good results. Really glossy, like almost powder coat like finish and very, very durable. The only downfall is it does take forever to dry. So if you're looking to paint something quick, toss it on, not the best choice. But if you got some time to let it dry, definitely a good option. All right, we'll let that dry for a little bit, come back, flip it over, do the other side. While we're waiting on it to dry, we've got some stuff. I want to tear into the diff. It's supposed to be a 1.5 way. I don't know, it says VLSD on the case, could be a VLSD. I want to, I want to pull the cover off and see what we're working with there. I feel like car differentials are ah, the freaking densest object known to man. <laughs> They're always so heavy. Good idea to change the fluid anyway. One of the reasons that I'm so curious about this is like every car in Japan comes with like a twin disc clutch and like a 1.5 way or a two way. And you always wonder like, is that just something that all the uh, exporters say because everyone says it, you know what I mean? Or like, like how every exported engine from Japan has 60,000 kilometers on it, you know? And the car did have a really nice clutch. Maybe it does have an actual 1.5 way. That would be nice. These things are expensive. And if it doesn't, we definitely need to do something because a VLSD is not gonna cut it. Always keep around specific screwdrivers for prying so you don't ruin your nice screwdrivers. Oh yeah, boy! Hell yeah! That is super exciting. But while we're here, we can measure and see if it's the, like what the final drive ratio is. I don't know exactly what it is because it's a Zafiro. I would assume it's 410, like normal S13, but we'll find out. All right, so to do this, we're going to mark a line here on our input shaft, and then a line over here on our axle. We'll count the number of times this has to turn to turn this once. Okay, so starting, so one, two, three, four, 
Might be more than a 410, might be like a 427. Yeah, it's gotta be. Like a 430. So, good to know. Definitely need to try and do a six speed. I was originally planning on doing a five speed, but I've been able to find a decent amount of six speeds you know, within a couple hours of here at uh, junkyards and stuff, and having an actual overdrive instead of just one to one in fifth gear would be really nice for cruising on the highway. So we're gonna have to try to do that. But anyway, topic for another video. Well, we could have made our lives easy. That says 48 to 11, you divide. 48 by 11, you get 4.36, 36, 36, 36, 36. So it's a 436. Better than I thought. So I did reuse the OEM gasket. It looked to be in good shape and I avoid RTVing stuff if I can just so I don't have to clean it off when I take it back apart. It might leak, it might not. It, based on the way the covers are machined, I think it's a better idea to use the gasket than to RTV it, but I don't know, time will tell. We'll see if it leaks. If it leaks, I'll eat my words, I'll take it back out and I'll RTV it. So, uh, paint's still not dry enough to flip this thing over and paint the top side. We got a freaking bug, get off my paint. Uh, <laughs> So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and work on switching over our five lug hubs. So we need to get these kind of stripped down, torn apart, and get our new five lug hubs on. So let's toss them on the bench, get to it. All right, we should be able to just zap this off now. This is one thing that's really nice about 240s and such and sucks about Miatas. 240s, the bearing. Rear hubs are bolt-in, Miatas, they're press-in. Granted, this thing's a little stuck, but nothing some hammering won't fix. All right, we're gonna enlist our good friend, PV Blaster on this. Let that soak for a minute. Worst case, we can press this out. All right, so first hub did not want to come out, so I took the control arm off, I brought it over here. I pressed it out and, uh, Silly me didn't pay attention to the fact that it was probably gonna bounce when it fell, bounced, smashed my toe. So that felt great, this is where it ended up. Like whatever, it's fine, no big deal. So then, do the other arm, I PB it like I did that one. I'm carrying it over here. The thing falls out, just misses, smashing the same toe. I was like, dude, what kind of luck would that be if this thing fell out and freaking smashed my same toe? But anyway, we got both hubs out, that's what matters. Did have to take the control arms off because I couldn't fit it in the press with the control arm and the control arm ball joints are pretty shot. As much as I don't want to freaking put new ball joints in here. Anyway, probably gonna have to just suck it up and put new ball joints in. The other thing I realized, basically our dual caliper adapter setup that we're gonna use needs to bolt on essentially with the wheel bearing. So we can't put our wheel bearings back in until we have those, which I don't have because I hadn't ordered them yet because that's kind of a down the line thing. Like I don't need the, the dual caliper stuff right now. So that is one of those, you know, tough things about builds. You you think you have everything and then when you get it apart, you find more stuff you need and order that stuff and wait, it either puts it on hold or you halfway put it back together to take it back apart. So uh, it can definitely be tough at times. But not a huge deal, not a huge dilemma, but you know, one of those things. So for the bushing install, we need to devise some sort of bushing installer tool. Basically two kind of plates, a, a bolt with a nut or welded on nut to kind of squish the bushings in because we're not going to get them in by just pushing them in even though they are in the freezer. That'll help, but it's not going to be enough. in here just to uh, help keep things nice and slippery. I'm not gonna put a ton because then we'll have basically hydraulic compression issues but just enough to slicken things up. Uh, 
Uh, that one's ovalized. I'm gonna have to really work to get that one in. It's just like it only wants to sit on two points and when you try to hit it, it just rotates. But the hammer method seems to work better than my tool does. So we're just gonna keep rolling with it. Grab the other one. some persistence but yeah. I figured that's what I had to do just get it going in crooked and hammer it if you get it going in crooked and you push too far and it was hard to get it that far in crooked it's gonna be real hard to get it out crooked so hey we got the top stone let's flip it over to the bottoms hopefully this one goes a little easier always looks so snazzy seeing a subframe with fresh solid bushings in it all right, well, this is just basically the same process over again, so I'll just snap our way right through it. All right, got them all in. Uh, these went in a lot easier. Hammering worked great. These ISR bushings are stout, man. These things just hammered them all in, you can barely tell. So really glad to have that over with. Subframe bushings are always one of those projects where you're like, oh, I know that's not gonna be fun. There's other projects you tell yourself it'll be fine and it might be annoying, but that's the one where you're like, no matter what, that's not gonna be the most fun thing ever, but I'm glad to have it done. All right, so we've ran into another slight dilemma. I was gonna just put it all back together without the hubs, but crucial, crucial oversight on my part. I can't, I can't let myself run these. I was like, oh, I'll run them. I mean, the ball joints are still tight. They're just, you know, the boots are torn, but I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. Everything else in the rear suspension is new and refreshed and spherical and whatever. And then we got this crusty nonsense. No, I can't, I can't let myself do that. So I couldn't find ball joints. Replacement arms are like freaking $180 each for like just stock arms. But I did find a ball joint that's supposed to work. It's like for the front of an Altima. So I've got those on the way. I've got polyurethane bushings on the way. So what we're gonna do, since we can't put the subframe back together until we get the rest of these parts, we're gonna go ahead and get these all stripped down. That way we can paint them. And then when the parts come in, we can just slab them back together, throw everything back on. One of those things, man. Just how it is with cars sometimes. So, so let's try to get these stripped down. Huh? Clips are rusty. I didn't think that was gonna go over very easily. Sweet. Well, that was easier than I expected. All right, time to take them to the press. One down, one to go. Got it. Well, getting the uh, <laughs> bushings out was a bit of a fail. I tried a bunch of combinations. I tried smaller sockets, it wasn't working. I even tried, as you could probably tell, the uh, air chisel and it just wanted to eat it up. So I'm not 100% sure that the uh, energy bushings I ordered are gonna be right. It's just, it's, it's tough to find old S chassis Nissan stuff, like ball joints, you know? You can't just find an S chassis ball joint. You gotta go in for something else that measure and make sure it fits. So anyway, I don't wanna risk destroying these, getting them out, and then I have the wrong bushing. So we're just gonna go ahead and paint them now, and then we'll wait, and once we get the other bushings in, if they look right and measure out right, then we'll do what we gotta do to get these ones out. But I mean, at least for now, these are in good shape. Like, none of them are blown out, they're all tight. Uh, so worst case, if we had to run them, it's not the end of the world. Got a spray paint, so there's nothing else I need to paint while I'm out here painting. All right, we'll let that dry for a few minutes and then we'll flip it to the other side. Yeah, this stuff definitely doesn't have that same glossy finish that the uh, other paint has. Oh, that's disappointing. Uh, I've got to mount a lot of tires for clutch kickers this weekend, which might get postponed because of the hurricane. I don't know. It's kind of, things are up in the air right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and get tires mounted. We're running all 245s this weekend on the LS Miata. This is the final round. We're going all out. Normally I run some smaller 225s and then if I really need it, I put these on, but we're just, we're running these all weekend. We're gonna see, see what we can do. See if we can uh, bring home a decent finish. 
the old LS Miata for the uh, final round of clutch kickers this season. So anyway, I mean, I guess we're pretty much at a stopping point, waiting for ball joints, waiting for bushings, waiting for dual caliper brackets. I wanted to get all this done, this video, and I wanted to dive into the front. We're gonna be relocating the rack and doing angle and notching control arms and stuff, but uh, typical project that uh, took longer than I intended. So to start on that next video, but for now, I guess that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Again, I'm sorry I didn't get it done. Really wanted to get Really wanted to get it all done, but that's the way it goes sometimes. It's the reality of building a car. It just happens. So I hope to see you guys for the next one. But for now, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.